Love Never Fails, a Christian romance novel by Courtney Ali. Chapter 1, Spring Break of 2011. The pace of my heartbeat began to subside once we took a much-needed break. I immediately collapsed on the basketball court, wiping my damp forehead with the back of my hand. Dude, that was intense. I squinted my eyes as the sun's beam gambled across my face. Well, maybe if you weren't so competitive, you wouldn't be gasping for air, Austin complained. I pulled myself off the ground, feeling dryness in my throat. I needed water ASAP. Whatever. Do you have anything to drink inside? I switched subjects. Isaac and Ethan, who were shooting hoops with Austin and me, shot up from the bench when they heard the word drink. You guys are wimps. Come on, one more game. Austin rolled the basketball towards me. I sluggishly picked up the ball, tossing it between each palm. Man, screw that. I need something to drink before we play again. I'm with Matt on this. I am parched, Ethan concurred. Who says parched? Austin turned his nose at Ethan. A guy who's about to die of a sunstroke, he replied. Ugh, there's bottled water in the fridge, Austin said, shaking his head in dismay. Just FYI, my sister might be in there. She's back in town and hosting something for her friends. Gotcha. I'll just grab everyone some water. I wiped my sweaty nose with the hem of my Nike t-shirt. Two for me, man, Isaac called out as I walked towards the house. I gave him a salute hand gesture, walking through the French doors that led to the main living area. I was immediately greeted by the smell of grilled chicken and onions. There was a complete table spread in the living room. A gold bar cart was placed in the front, which was covered with pastries, hors d'oeuvres, fancy sparkling water, chicken kebabs, chips and salsa, and matching pink striped napkins and straws. Everything was thoroughly and perfectly staged. It looked like something off Pinterest. I was almost afraid to walk through the living room. I carefully walked past all the nicely arranged setup. I didn't even realize how hungry I was until my stomach began to growl, seeing all those pink cupcakes, cookies, and grilled chicken kebabs. As I trotted over to the kitchen, I saw a girl pulling something out of the oven, whom I presumed was Austin's sister. Her back was turned to me, fiddling with the oven. When she finally steered directions, she almost had a heart attack. Oh my gosh, she scared me. She pressed her hand against her chest. My bad, I didn't mean to startle you. I placed the basketball that was still in my hands on the bar stool at the island table. Instantly, I noticed how gorgeous she was. She had beautiful long black curls, pink ample lips, luminous skin, beautiful thick eyebrows, a nice skirted figure, and a pretty floral dress covered with a frilly pink apron. She sort of looked like Austin, but not completely. He did mention in passing that they were twins, but I did not see it. The girl was straight up beautiful. I lost my train of thought for a second. Hey, I managed to muster up after realizing my heart just stopped. She had a confused look at first, but followed with a gradual smile. Hey. Again, I'm sorry for scaring you like that. I'm Matthew, by the way. Matt for short. I stuck my hand out as I introduced myself. Nice to meet you, Matt. I'm Adlin, Austin's sister. She wiped the flower off her hand with the apron. Before shaking my hand, her hand was warm and soft to the touch. Oh, yeah, he told me you might be in here. I was just coming to get some water bottles. Help yourself, she said politely. Thank you. I'm literally about to pass out, I chuckled. I'm actually surprised at the heat today. I leave Seattle for eight months, and this is what I come back to. Oh, you don't go to school here? I walked towards the fridge to grab a few waters. Adlin grabbed a rolling pin from the cabinet to flatten out the pizza dough on the counter. No, I go to Stanford University, but I'm transferring to UW next fall. I lean my arm against the island table. Wow, really? You must be hella smart. Why on earth would you transfer to UW? I guess I'm somewhat of a bookworm, she admitted. Adeline rolled the dough quickly as she continued talking. But I'm transferring to UW because, unfortunately, Stanford's tuition is sky high, so my dad thinks it's better for me to just finish college here and be closer to home. I leaned my arm against the counter. Oh, that sucks, but I get it. These Ivy League colleges expect you to pay an arm and a leg. They're insane. But that's still impressive. Not only are you a great cook, but you're a genius, too. Your dad must be proud regardless. Adeline rolled her beautiful eyes with a snort. 
I've always been an indoors person, baked a lot, read a lot of books, sold, played piano, and watched a lot of black and white films. I became more intrigued. You don't say. I'm the complete opposite. I've always been outdoorsy. I continued. Yeah, I can tell, she snorted. I gazed at her. How so? Well, you were carrying a basketball, and you're sweating profusely, (laughs) she snickered. I took a long sip of my water, still gawking at her. What if it was just a facade? She rolled her eyes again. Would you really go to great lengths just to prove your athleticism? I smiled at her. Maybe. I made her laugh. Wow, the dedication. She shook her head jokingly. Hey, I'll fake it till I make it. I raise my hands in innocence. I guess she still did not sound convinced. I finished the rest of my water reaching for my second one. At least I'm not the type that takes pictures in the gym and brags about it on MySpace. She smiled slowly. You have a point there. Some people don't even bother to drizzle their face with water just to give the appearance of being attractive. That is true. See, I'm two steps ahead of the game. I nodded at her. Good for you. You deserve an award. You really do, Adeline teased. I laughed, really enjoying my conversation with Adeline. Unfortunately, it was cut short when the guys walked in. Dude, what's taking so long getting water? Isaac approached me in the kitchen. You're having a full-blown conversation with my sister, Austin complained as he snatched a water bottle from the table. I was just about to come outside, I lied. Sure you were, Ethan snickered. Calm down, Austin, Adeline shook her head at him. How can I be calm when I'm outside dehydrated and my friend is casually having a conversation with my sister in the kitchen? Austin emphasized the word sister. I didn't want to be rude. I shrugged. Austin gave me a warning look as if he were reading my mind. Dude, don't even come up with the excuses. I'm not, I sneered. Adeline's phone began to ring. She hastily took off her apron, excusing herself as she exited the kitchen to answer the phone call. Probably her boyfriend. So, you were chatting with my sister this whole time when you were supposed to be bringing us water? Austin asked rhetorically as he shook his head. Not my fault, I was just being polite. He couldn't get mad at me for being respectful. I always made sure to introduce myself whenever I met someone new. You were being polite, all right. Isaac nudged me with a sly grin. I don't hit on every hot girl I meet. Come on, have more faith in me, man. Did you really just call my sister hot? Austin stricked like he wanted to vomit. Isaac and Ethan erupted in laughter. I grazed my hand over my mouth casually trying to keep a straight face. No, dude, I didn't. Don't even think about it. My sister is off limits and she won't be impressed anyway. I'm not trying to go after your sister. I scoffed at him. Dang. Couldn't I have a simple conversation with Adeline without Austin thinking I was coming on to her? Austin raised his brow at me, chugging down his water. Good. Let's keep it that way. Chapter 2, present day, July 10, 2018. I really think that tree would look better next to the piano. I pointed my finger towards the black Casio. Nancy Barnes, one of the church volunteers, moved the cardboard tree next to the piano. Is this fine, Adlin? I pressed the cupcakes and cashmere clipboard I bought from Target against my chest. Perfect. The set is coming together. Good job, guys. Paul chirped as he walked through the church stage. Paul was the music director at Green Pastures Church and was put in charge of music for the play we were putting together. Thanks, Paul. We had the older kids paint most of the cutouts. I took pleasure in helping my church in any way I could. When I wasn't home, I was here or hanging out with Matt's grandmother. How's the musical selection coming along? Nancy asked Paul as she stood on the stage. Pretty well. I finished most of the songs and the choir is catching on fast. That's good to hear. We don't want any mishaps on opening night, Nancy croaked. She was right. The last time we put on a biblical play, the sopranos kind of sounded off-key next to the mezzo-sopranos and altos. Don't worry, we got it together this time, Paul reassured. I glanced at my watch saying it was past 4.30. Well, everything seems to be coming together nicely. I should start heading home to make dinner before Matt gets back. I sprung up from the pew, grabbing my purse and umbrella from the seat next to me. Same. My kids keep texting me. Say hi to Matt for me. Nancy walked down the steps to the stage. I will. Oh, ladies, you enjoy the rest of the evening. I think I'm going to stay a bit and knock out the rest of these songs. Paul made his way back to the black piano. Nancy and I told him good night in unison. I managed to make it home before Matt. Thank 
God. I didn't want dinner to not be ready before he got home. I had some steaks already marinated in the fridge so I could just cook them on the stove when I was ready. I cut up some yellow potatoes from the garden and boiled them in my favorite matte cream Le Creuset pot. I began cutting up the white onion to saute with the steaks for additional flavor. I seasoned some fresh broccoli with Himalayan salt and ground peppercorn. The kitchen was now smelling like a Texas steakhouse. As I was flipping the steaks to the other side, I heard the door open from the garage. Matt came through the kitchen holding his laptop case and suit jacket. I turned to give him a soft smile as I still watched the food. Hey, Maddie. Matt placed his laptop bag and jacket on the island table. What's up, babe? Just finishing dinner. It should be ready in about 10 minutes. Matt opened the lid to the glass cake stand, helping himself to a baked cookie. Okay, it smells good. I snorted at him. Why are you eating cookies? You're going to spoil your appetite. Matt walked over to me with a smirk, still chomping on the chocolate chip cookie. I'm hungry now. I know, but dinner is almost ready. You're supposed to eat dessert afterwards. He just snickered, standing behind me by the stove. I could smell his faint Armani cologne. I like my dessert first, Matt teased as he wrapped his arms around my waist from behind. I couldn't help but laugh. That's why you never finish your vegetables. He laughed near my ear, giving me a peck on the cheek. Mm, I just don't like vegetables. Well, you should, I snickered. See, this is why I married you. So you can keep track of my dietary needs, Matt said sarcastically. I rolled my eyes laughing. Yeah, okay, I'll remember that next time we go to bed. Matt cracked a smile, tickling me on the side of my waist. You got jokes, Ed? I squealed, trying to square him out of his arm. Stop! I pretended to be annoyed, but I loved when he tickled me. I just got home. You're already insulting me. Matt shook his head, pretending to be dismayed. I didn't insult you. I laughed. Yeah, you did, but it's okay. I forgive you. Matt grinned as he kissed me with warm lips, which tasted like chocolate. I kissed him back, resting my free hand around his neck. He pulled me closer to him, kissing me more deeply. As he was moving towards my neck, I let out a short giggle. <laughs> Maddie, I have to watch these steaks. It's finished, Matt murmured as he pecked my neck, but eventually he let me go. I turned my attention back to the steaks and vegetables on the stove. Matt was right. The steaks were overdone, so I just turned off the stove. Matt grabbed his suit jacket to change upstairs. Once he came back down, I already had his plate ready. Thanks, sweetheart. This looks good, Matt grumbled as he sat at the nook table. You're welcome. I sat across the table from him. Matt reached for my hands as he said grace for us. One of the things I loved about Matt was his leadership and love for God. He always made it a point to say grace, pray, and correct me when I was wrong. Matt always challenged me, but with love, which led me to reevaluate my own preconceived opinions and thoughts about the world. That's how I knew Matt was the right one for me. To continue reading Love Never Fails, a Christian romance novel by Courtney Ali, visit CourtneyAli.com, C-O-U-R-T-N-E-Y-A-L-I.com for more information.